Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael and in today's tutorial video, which we're going to be looking at it on this wing coaster instead, um, but we are going, and I'll show you how to do it for an RMC and stuff at the end, but we are going to look at how to get an extra coaster train on your transfer track. And it's really straightforward and simple, but the first thing you need to do in settings is you need to, I always forget where it's at. Um, I think it's under over here um, at the bottom uh, crash test dummies turn those off because then it makes it look like you know they don't have the crash test dummies there's nothing in the coaster car but as you can see it's paused right now but if we play it that coaster train is not moving at all and the only thing is you got to figure out a way to kind of hide the the look that the coaster has getting either up the lift hill or being launched up and stopping so that's what we're going to look at today and so i hope you are excited for this as i'm going to start using this a lot in my theme parks and i want to credit a couple people well really one main person i've seen use this a lot and um i spotlight a couple videos where this has been used before but coaster creations is one of the first that i saw really start to use this and I'll link his YouTube channel below, but he does a great job with it. I also saw Corvus doing it the other day. So I think more creators are starting to use this trick, which is really cool. But I just wanted to kind of show you and take you through a quick tutorial how you can use this trick. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first step with this is knowing what kind of coaster model to use. And with the wing coaster here, we've got to use the Cloud Runner, which is the launched wing coaster. So what you can see what I did, it took me a little bit of practice. I was trying to film as I was doing this, but I just couldn't get the angle right for some reason. I think ultimately I just had to turn the acceleration up. So let me show you again real quick what, what you can do here. So I just put this at 67 degrees. Let's try doing 78 because it'll be a little more steep with this acceleration rate and see if that works. And then put this down to zero. Yep, so you see how how it gets to the top of that. So then when we get to this point, we'll put a little bit of um, a little bit of a break at three miles per hour. Another one here at three miles per hour, and then we'll put a straight section here. So now let's see where this coaster stops at. So it's gonna stop. Oh, almost. Okay. So let's change this from three miles per hour to two miles per hour and see. See if that makes a difference. Hey, we got two coasters stopped there. Or two coaster trains. Um, stop, stop. There we go. So you can see now the coaster is going to stop there. And as long as, like, if we keep this in test mode... As long as you keep it in test mode and you don't do anything with it, that coaster train is going to stand there. So now here's where the tricky part comes in. Because if you just take this and if we just try to shift this down, it's not going to let us do that, right? And we need it to be roughly the same height as this. I mean, that's, that's close enough. I mean, it's not perfect. So essentially, we need this to go right here. But the issue is that it's not allowing me to do that with the ground. So here's where it might be a little bit tricky with the placement that I kind of use for this area is I'm going to try to lower the ground around this enough to be able to lower this into the ground to the position that we want. So now... As I said, I mean, that's, that's close enough. It's not quite straight either. So let me turn that. All right. Yes, yeah, so I mean, that's close enough right there. So now if you can see here. Now what we would do is we would come back to the terrain menu and we're going to cover this up now the issue with with right here though is that based off how i kind of had this sloped i was not intending to have um 
I don't want this to be a completely flat surface, right? I need it to kind of be a little slanted and stuff like that. So it's just going to be a little bit tricky getting it back the way I had it. And then there's also another thing that we need to focus on as well. So let me just flatten this part out. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect right now. This is more just a... Um, you know, just kind of showing what happens. So now, as you can see, we've got the coaster track kind of sticking out there. Also, I didn't deck, deck out this at the interior of this coaster, so let me actually delete that. Let me. So I'm going to... take out this one as well. So now, what I would do, if I was doing something like this, is I would probably raise the bottom of this up a little bit. And then, you know, maybe you would So I'm not actually going to go through and kind of deck out the interior here just because that would take way too much time. Um, but now the idea is that with by, by testing this, we can now sit here and see that well, that's one thing I might be able to do as well, just kind of make the train kind of larger right there, a little bit bigger. There we go. I was wondering why that coaster wasn't working. So what I need to do here is I need to take all of this and I need to shift it out. Oops, that's not meant to do. Hold on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to shift it out about two, two units that way. So then I'm going to take this and everything here and I'm going to shift that back out as well. So it's you got to give yourself enough space. Um, because the reasoning is, if not, what's going to happen is you're not accounting for the, um, you're not accounting for the coaster track that's going to have to be underneath the ground right there. But you got to find a way to hide that. So let's just take these. You know, something like this. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. It's just what, however you're wanting to make your backstage. But what I really want to show you now is, okay, we've got to hide this part right here, right? And by the way, I need to state that I was not the first one to figure out how to do this by far. Like, there's a lot of other people that have done really good jobs with this. But you just want to kind of put a, um, put a wall there to kind of hide it, right? Um, then you do something like this. Uh, let's see. So now let's just put some flooring in here just to make it look semi okay. Um, so if we take this, this door, and we shift it in here, so we want to make it look want to make it look okay, right? So, we could do a couple things is if I mess with the terrain just a tad bit because this terrain up here is a lot a little bit higher than the terrain a little bit uh, at the front. Now, I'm just going to take normally what I would do is I would just take um, some kind of cement material so if we go here to roofing, smooth concrete roof, something like that. And we want to put it down maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, that'd be, be a good amount right there. So then, you know, you just kind of place this over. 
and so forth. And we make the, the flooring for the coaster. And then you can obviously adjust any spots that you need to. Um, and you can see how I'll need to adjust that and so forth. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea with this is ultimately the whole video and I've got to extend this a little bit as you can see that's not the this is a little bit too narrow but the idea is that how can we put a transfer track make sure that we have a coaster train on the transfer track um, and so there's a lot of different ways you could do it and I think one thing that I've learned too is if we pull up because I had to delete some stuff in wild winds to be able to actually look at the transfer track stuff um, but like take for example take an rmc you know you can't launch an rmc but what you could do is so we can't launch it but we could do a chain lift you can make it as narrow as possible about that high to be able to go under the ground and then put this at zero you could do drive tires for a second something like this and let's see if that works so it doesn't just have to be with the launch yeah so if we maybe if we put the drive tires to one okay so let's see extend this just a little bit more yeah, so see, it just kind of takes some working with it to try to see what works, what doesn't work. And so there, I mean, that's still maybe a little bit too short, um, just in the sense that the coaster train stops. But the idea is so that we can, you can have that coaster on the transfer track. And it just sits there until as long as you keep it testing. So you could do this with any coaster type. It's just going to be tougher if you have a transfer track that doesn't have an enclosed building to kind of hide the hide the look of it, right? So this coaster is going to sit here the whole time. So I think it's just a really, really cool thing to be able to do. And like I said, I hope this was helpful to at least show you how to do it. Um, let's see. So another good option. Let's say we take... Yeah, so let's let's take another BNM for example. Okay, I want to do, um, or we could even take the Cloud Runner coaster type, because that one gives you a launch that's a vertical launch, right? So you could take the Cloud Runner, like we did before, and do the 90 degree launch acceleration rate. So that would probably actually be a little bit easier. Let's see if this works. Oh wow, that was that was a perfect one for the first try right there. All right, so what you could also do is you could look at this and say, well, you know what? I want to do this for B and M. So you know what? Let's change it to the Rage Coaster model. Why is it not testing? Oh, I guess I got to retest it, right? So there we go. Now we've got a B and M. Hyper or Giga on the transfer track. You could do the Giovanola one. Um, Enigma is the stand-up coaster. The Werewolf is the floor list. This is your B&M sit-down. So it just depends on what type of coaster track. Now you want to make sure that you use the coaster track that resembles the actual model that you're making, right? So let's kind of look through some of these just real quick to make sure we understand that aspect of it and um, you know, this is your RMC single rail. Obviously, it's one by itself. This is an aero coaster. Um, this would be the old school aero hyper. So if we're looking at launched in that sense, Copperhead Strike is a Mac coaster. So any Mac coaster launch, you could use this track model type. 
Um, this one right here is your Vacoma motorbike, or you could also, I guess, look at like an Intamin motorbike. I don't know necessarily which track that follows best. I would say probably Vacoma. Um, and then the Sprint, you got the Torque. I think that's the SNS. I think the closest one that resembles is SNS. Vector is one of these is Mac and Intamin. I just get confused on launch one sometimes, right? But with using those coaster models, that coaster track, you can have it resemble, obviously, the coaster you previously built. Then if you look at the Gerslauer ones, those would be the Bar Heist, the Bolt, Cascade, stuff like that. Um, so I hope this video has been helpful, and I know it's kind of a little bit scattered with some of it, but the whole point is trying to show you how you can get this, right? So... Um, Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of the video. And I hope this was helpful to you. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.